Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. Today we are taking a look at Egoist from Sugar Bites and I've wanted to do this video for ages and ages and ages. So this is uh, like a complete guide to Egoist. So the video will be quite long. Uh, I mean, you can skip bits and pieces if you want, obviously, but if you want to learn how to do absolutely everything in Egoist, then, you know, if you watch the whole video, by the time it's finished, you'll understand the whole thing. So, uh, like how to create songs, import your own samples, chop egg, everything. So when you first open Egoist, it'll open up the last session that you had open. In this instance, it's one of the presets bandits. Now, the thing that can get confusing with Egoist is there are loads and loads, absolutely tons and tons of, um, of, of, of presets here. Um, you've got all of these, you know, and inside each preset, inside each category, there are a ton more presets. Each uh, thing in um, in Egoist is made up of a like a slicer. This is where you'll do all your main kind of fun stuff. Then you have a bass and beat machine. This is really, really deep. It's much deeper than it actually appears. Then you have a very, very cool effect section. And then you have general overall settings. And these are really important as well to how uh, Egoist responds and stuff. So the easiest way to understand all this is to start with a completely blank pattern. Okay, so super, super blank. Open the preset and in sugar bites A, go all the way to the bottom and you'll see empty. Hit empty and you'll get completely nothing. And you'll see that all of these little slice markers are all set to one. And then what we want to do is import a, a, a sample or a loop, you know. And we can do that here where it says empty. Let me just tap on this. And we can use user. They're the ones that I've already done. Or we can choose from any of the other samples that are included inside to start creating your own stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go to user. And I'm just going to choose this um, 1 to 16. Okay. Now you'll see that it is got six it's basically 16 parts of me just go one two three four five six seven eight but you'll see that like here where it ends i could sorry that's midi learn you can see where it ends is if i move this little end point here i can move 16 to there and then i could move 15 to there then 14 to there 13 to there, 12 to there, 11 to there. You'll see they've stacked up. Um, you've got like 10 there, and then we could put 9 and then 8. And 1, 2, 3, 4. And it was 4 gone. Okay. And they're like this. Or the easier, the other easier way to do it is to hit this thing that says 16 slices. And this will divide your sample up into 16 equal parts. Now, you can see that I've recorded this and uh, didn't start exactly the beginning. So each slice is not going to pick up. So, so if I played that now, all it'll play, and all it'll play is slice number one, like this. <laughs> And it'll just keep repeating one because the only slice that is selected in the slicer is number one. Okay, so if we set num the second part to number two, like this, it will play one and two, one and two, one and two, but really quickly. Okay, so to illustrate this better, I have set up a preset in user and call that preset um where is it now template one okay so in template one there is no there is no no loop to slice okay so we have but i have set this up so it's got one to 16 uh going sequentially sort of thing so now if i import a user 
uh, file, like 1 to 16 again. You'll see that it's done it again, but this time I'm going to hit 16 slices first, and then you'll see that it's split it up into 16 equal parts. Okay, so each part will now play sequentially. 1, 2, 3, three 6, 9. Three, nine. One, two, three, six. Now, One, two, three, nine. what I need to do now six. is set my slices to suit each particular. I mean, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because, you know, we really will be here all day. But, you know, you get the idea. You can set your slice. Let me just put that pitch back to C. There we go. You can set your slices to play sequentially. Two, three, four, four, six, nine. Now you'll notice that it's overlapping. Okay, so this is because in the settings menu here, we have this little switch that says monophonic. I'll go through all of these, but it says monophonic slicer. Okay. If we switch monophonic slicer on, it stops the slices being polyphonic. So each slice will cut the next slice off. Two, four, three, two. Now, again, like Six. I said, you want to make adjustments to each of the slices where you want them. All right. Okay. So what we can do is we've already, uh, this is already coming as it is. And it's sick, like loaded up at 16 slices, for instance. Well, say we wanted number one to play four times. It's kind of straightforward. You just move your slice position. So like, you can understand that this would be slice eight here. And if I move slice eight to there, like this, and I can eight. sample it. Eight. Eight. You can check it out. And then I want the next four times it to play eight. Sample eight like this. Move it down. It's a little bit fiddly. So eight and eight. So now we'll have one play four times and then we can switch off the next load of samples as well if we want to the next set of slices so we'll get like eight eight we can adjust it eight eight and it will carry on until we switch on the next one eight so let's move that number nine eight Eight. Eight. So there, and switch Eight. it back on. Nine. 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 Okay, so you get the idea. You you bring in your your sample, and then you can manipulate it like this manually. And before we get any further, as well, we can reverse each of these slices. So if we wanted to reverse number nine, we get this effect. <laughs> So we say we can't, well, we can't hear that. So what we need to do is let's bring in our slices so we can see it better. So by moving it, by moving along the actual thing, you can zoom in so you can get really, really accurate with where you want to place the slice. So we want the end to start, the end of number nine because we're reversing let's could take number 10 and move it back to about there and if we try it now nine nine so let's play it because we've reversed number nine okay now just below this you have pitch okay so you have direction and pitch and at any time you want you can also just shorten the entire length of the actual sequence. We probably need to go a little bit more to hear the nine. And if we wanted to switch these on and like to have it sample uh, trigger number. Sorry about this, this won't be easy with me hand. I'm trying to do it so you can see what's going on, you know. Number nine, like this. And let's turn just the second one of those on, but let's leave it going forward. So the 
they're triggering so fast now that you can't actually hear them. Okay, so like I said, this, this is your pitch and it will go up in semitones. So we'll start with where it is now here, which is at zero. And we'll put this one at say three and then we'll move this one up to say a fifth and then we'll move this one up to say a seventh. So seven semitones up from its original pitch. And with this effect, you'll get the first going up. So you can go up to like plus or minus 12 semitones there. But this the bottom one here is octave up. So octave up or octave down by swiping up or down. So you can like, let's do this with the actual, let's put this back to a three and let's set the eights at uh, oct octave up, octave down, octave up and octave down. <laughs> so you get the idea there. Now, anytime you want to, you can just hit the little dice here and it will randomize the actual sequence, but it will not randomize your pitch control. Your pitch control is independent. You can take out the pitch uh, control altogether, or you can then randomize it. And then you can copy and paste it to the next pattern. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just finish with the slicer sort of thing. Then below this here, you have attack and you can randomize the attack and decay. So there is attack here and decay for each individual slice. Now, probably the easiest way, if I go back to say my user presets here and I pick um, this, this, other, this one called, um, I think it's, I don't, I don't know. Right, strawberry. This was, uh, uh, this was part of the original um, presets. If we go to Nadine here, you'll see 95 strawberry. So this is how they programmed it. Okay. And I took that sample, put it into a blank project and messed around with it. And I got this now. Now this might have some drums and different pr patterns programmed. So I've got two patterns here, two patterns programmed, and you can program up to 16 patterns. It's that easy. So now I'm going to show you what to do with the, the patterns and stuff. So now you know how to do your, your decay, your attack, adjust the pitch either with octaves or semitones, set up the slices exactly how you want them, manipulate the sample player. I'll show you also about the length, the envelope and the max out as well. Also the randomize and of course the pitch here. So this is what I did with that, with that loop, with that sample, you know. And then I programmed another one. And then that one's blank. So what you can see there, there's no adjustments to the pitch or anything like that. And no adjustments to the pitch here. But you'll notice that I changed out from the sequential to the random and made a few adjustments here and there and reversed a bit, a few bits and pieces. But you'll also hear that I added some bass and um, a drum kit as well. Okay, so we do, this is we're going to get ahead of ourselves. I just want to cover the slicer. How to copy now if we've got an empty program here. Let's say we wanted our pattern number one, the whole thing copied over to, actually, no, let's not. Let's just copy the um, the slicer section of pattern one to pattern three, okay? If we want to do the whole global thing, that means if we want to copy the entire pattern, the baseline, everything else, we need to hit this down the bottom here, which is global. So hitting that little dice there will randomize everything, the bass, the, the drums, the whole thing, all the patterns and everything. But if we hit this little copy button here and then go to the pattern that we want and hit the load, that will load like the drums, the bass and the beats as it is in pattern one. 
But just let's say we don't want the bass and the drums. We want to maybe do something else with them in pattern three. Let's copy this here. So the, in the slicer section, and you could also do it with the actual uh, pitching and also with the decay and release, uh, attack and decay, sorry. So that will, you can copy independent parts separately and paste, but to do it, it's dead easy. So let's say I want this one. So I'm going to tap that little uh, double file icon there, go to pattern three, which is empty, and then hit the little import. And that's imported just the pattern. And not the, not the bass or the beat, so you'll see that they're empty. Okay, so which is a good place now to show you about the actual um, bass synth and the, the uh, drum machine. It's absolutely fantastic, this drum machine is, and it looks really, really simple, but it's, it, there's a lot going on, which is nice for you. Okay, so let's see. If we choose to, say, randomize, and let me just first show you how to add a bass. You tap on the slot, and these are different notes. So this note is a full note, and then you've got slightly shorter, and then shorter still, shorter still, and then you've got a short slide up, slide up, slide up, and a long slide up. Let's say, for instance, we choose this first one here, this full note, and then we hit play. Let's turn our slicer off so we can hear what's going on with the bass. So we can switch our slicer off here. We can mute it sort of thing. And that's it, it's very quiet. So let's make some adjustments to the bass. Let's turn up the cutoff. Let's choose a different preset actually. Okay. You have different filter types. Just leave it on the 030. And then you have different scales. But if I was to put another bass note the same length as that one there, it will just... It will just sustain. Like this. So it won't do anything. But if I was to change this one to like a short one... And let's move the pitch of this up. You'll start to hear the bend. And we can change the modulation amount and the source of the modulation. So that's starting to sound pretty cool. Okay, so you get the basic idea. So, and again, with, along the bottom here is octave up or octave down. But bring it, you won't hear any changes if the note is sustained. Okay, you can adjust the pitch. You could adjust the pitch of this one as much as you liked. It wouldn't matter. You won't. You won't hear it because it's a sustained note from this particular note here. Okay, to hear that note, you'd have to shorten it some to some degree, like this, I think. Or then we can take the whole thing and we can just randomize the notes. So let's just clear the actual notes and uh, the, 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 the changes to the notes we've got there. Let's randomize the pattern. Okay, but the note will be the same. It will still be in A. But we can put it into C. Well, you can do whatever we like with it, but we shall leave it in A for, for a moment. And we have a mixer volume here. That's a pretty quiet sound, but... We can change the waveform. So if we've got something we're happy with, of course, we can add other notes as well. Again, it'll just go across the 16 steps, of course. If we randomize, like, let's take, for instance, if we want to just chuck in a load of randomized notes here, we can do that. And it'll be... 
we could do it in minor. Now let's go on to the effects for the bass. Let's let's have a look at our effects for a start off. And we'll see that there's nothing there. It's empty. It works exactly the same way. You have filter, delay, reverb, lo-fi, chorus and stop and loop. To send, let's take it off for the slicer for a moment, but to send uh, the bass, the beat or the effects to the, to the, the bass or the beat or the slicer to the effects, you just highlight effect there and then you can start to add stuff. So for instance, we play this bass. Let's put this loop in at the bottom here. And there's the looper there. But you don't have to have it pitched. By the same token, we now apply some reverb to the bass, just on the first hit. And the same with delay and stuff like that. So if we wanted a bit of delay on the bass, we have to get it on the Sorry. Quite so much feet level, a bit less feedback, and then another cool thing is we can then go into our bass and beat. So let's say we're happy, let's say we're happy with that. But how does it sound with the slicer? Not a clue because I says we're setting this up from scratch, sort of thing. So we know our slicer is, um, you can also audition by the way, before I go any further, you can. Let me get this. Let me just clue you in on this, right? So, you, you know, the 16 slices will just slice the thing into 16 equal slices, which it already is here. And we have also said about the monophonic slice in there, which is switched off at the moment for this particular preset. Um, so what we can do is with the sensitivity, you might be thinking, well, let's say I don't want all them slices. Well, if you decrease the sensitivity you will see that the slices will disappear or reduce to a degree. Okay, so now you'd get that. If we switch the slicer back on. Sixteen equal. Let's turn the bass down in the mix. Okay, so if we wanted to now randomize this or copy and paste the whole thing to another pattern, we can. We can change the pitch. Okay, if you want to audition the sample and hear what the original loop sounds like, you can just hit the little play button at the side. Okay, so length. And the envelope is the decay. And then we can do monophonic slicing, or we can change the slice time base.
and then there's the max, the, like the max output for your loop. Okay, so like I said, what you can do now is say we're happy with that, right? And uh, we want it as like a change. So let's copy the our entire part and let's go to number five and let's just paste the whole lot in. So now we've got the whole the whole thing in there. Now what's cool about copy and pasting this, right? If I go to if I go to number six now, right? No, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll show you. Let's copy it again and then let's go to uh, pattern number six and let's import that pattern. If I change out the, um, let's use one of the user ones again. I've no real, I can't really remember what was what here, but let's do this one. I think this was a bit busy, but 16 slices. Um, what I've done now is you'll see that the, it says called gadget one 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 two part one. It doesn't matter about the tempo of the loop you import because egoist is just going to slice this up equally. So it's never going to be out of time. But if I look at this now, I've got called gadget part one and two. If I go back to number five, you'll see that it's back to strawberry. So each individual part remembers absolutely everything apart from the only thing it will remember is it will keep the same bass sound for each of the patterns and it will keep the same drum kit, okay? Everything else will be remembered by the pattern changes. So you, it's really, really good how it how it deals with all this stuff. So we know it's empty. So now this is the new one with the core gadget thing. back to number five so let's randomize the bass again so just let's keep the actual tuning the same but just let's randomize the actual notes and stuff What we can, do, what we've got now, I think we've covered these. Yes, this that's your master volume. So you can mute the slicer, the bass, or the beat to send any particular part to the effects. You hit uh, the effects tab, and it will light up in this little rainbow color. For instance, with the slicer at the moment, it is not going to the effects, and we know we set some effects up here. So let's have a listen to if we include the slicer in those effects. This, the slicer has now been affected the same way as the base is inside the thing. And our stop is quite nice as well. Um, so we could do stop. Let's put stop in um, across these first eight, just so you get the idea of the effect. Okay, so... So we don't want them in no, uh, for now. So, so far you know that you can, cop now this little keyboard here will, you can just tr trigger the slices via MIDI. Okay, so a quick look at the settings. This max out, before you engage that, I would advise you to turn your mat out because it's a maximizer. And this is kind of how long it takes. It's a bit like a compressor. It takes, this is how long it takes for it to kick. It's like the attack sort of thing. So down here is going to be kicking in straight away. Up here, it's going to be kicking in a little bit later. So if, you, if you're clever, you could probably get a pumping effect. Uh, okay, we've got it on monophonic slicer. We've done the time-based thing. So have a listen. That's quite nice. Ignore program changes is something to do with MIDI, which I'm not covering. So CC, preset, isolate and stuff. Direct pattern change, okay? If you, what happens if you do direct pattern change? 
it will change immediately as, as soon as you change the different pattern. <laughs> Obviously nothing in number four. So I would suggest turning direct pattern change off and then it will wait till its loops finished before you can go around to the next cycle. Okay. You can fine tune the slicer and the bass or you can master tune both the slicer and the bass. So if we... Okay, so let's check now. We've pretty much covered this. Now, I had this running in 8 Matrix the other day and having it modulate to cut off, which was great. Okay, now I'm going to go to a blank pack because I want to show you the, the drums. In the drum, the drum kit has... 10, what looks like, what is it, 10 or 11 kits? Uh, maybe a bit more, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe 20 kits or something like that. It's not, that's really, really um, not doing this justice at all because each kit, it, it's more like a, it's more like a category than a kit because each of these kits, like modular kits, so now let's put some, let's go into our, 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 our our beats here which is down the bottom let's put some kicks in here let's start it off i don't know why i'm not hearing anything there. oh i know let's put it turn the beats up well that's weird let me just see what's going on must be all oh, right hang on it's because it's a blank, right? We need to turn up the kicks near and hi hat volume. Why am I? Let me just uh, have a quick deck around there. I think maybe it would be easier if I started with a pattern that we've got running. Let me just have a quick look at that a sec. There's a couple of other things I need to show you as well about these. But we can do that while we're doing the drums. Okay, let's clear out, just for the uh, sake of this here, let's clear out all of this. And let's mute the slicer as well. So let's just play. Okay, so now we've got our drums are going. We can change the max output of just the drums now like I said it's really deceptive because in each one of these 20 odd kits or whatever there is there are actually 32 more kits that you can access via this here and for each of those 32 kits obviously there's 32 different sounds which can also be independently messed with as well Okay, so let's have a look at this. Let's put some snare in and let's put a bit of hi-hat in as well. Just so we've got sort of a very basic drum beat. So we're on modular kit two, we can go back and we can go through. 
through the basic kits, but then we can start to mess with all the different, and then we can just mess with all the different things. Okay, so here's what other stuff we can do with the kit. We can send it, now we can do this with all of our stuff. So if I put the slicer back in now, these are the directions and the speed. So we can have the slice play forward, backwards. Random. Half speed. And you can do that for, for the bass. See, you've got T1 down to T4. So you've got four choices of uh, operation there. And then also for the drums, so you could go half speed with the drums if you wanted to. You could put the slicer back up to one. You could go to your bass and beat. You could put the drums down to half speed. And what you could do then is you could copy that to, like, say, an, another one and then speed it back up to number one. Okay, so let's leave that at number one anyway. Okay, so for each of these drums, like I said, but you also have different kind of hits. Some of them won't do much, and some of them will really react differently. With some of them you get kind of a... With some of the different effects you kind of get like a, 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 a glitch effect and stuff like that, so or closed and open higher, etc, etc. Now you may also notice that there are three different settings, like there's off, then there's the first one, which is the loudest, then there's the open one, and then there's the smaller one. We've got three small ones there. Let's make this one into a small one. And this one into a small one, this one, this one, and this one. So now you'll sort of start with uh, this. Take I'll take the snares out so you're not hearing anything else. You see this here, you've got obviously you've got your max out, and you've got a left and a right for the hats as well. So let's turn the hat up a little bit. So you have a pan control for the hi-hats um, so you can get a bit of like width in the mix. But you've also got this attenuator as well, so the ATT, and that only affects the smallest hit. So if I turn that... So it's pretty going to be much the same as the rest of them. You can set up the the volume the volume of the smaller hit to get it to blend in better with your mix. Okay, and again we can just uh, randomize it and and randomize the bass then. 
Randomize the keys. Let's choose a different sample, but keep the same settings. Sometimes when you've got a, 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 a loop that's like that, it's nice to start adjusting the actual, um, the, 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 you know, the pitch, the semitones and stuff. You get some nice effects. We'll have that one on five as well. So... <laughs> So when you've built up all your patterns and stuff, okay, I know this is a long video, but it kind of, there's quite a lot to get through. And if I do two or three videos, the second two sort of get, they don't get as many views and it's not that, I think it's just nicer to see the whole thing in one piece. Okay, so part mode. What you've got now is you've got A to F. So you have six parts, okay? And these parts then correspond to how the song works. So you've got A to F. For parts, what you do is you can see at the moment it's going to play part one of that pattern four times. Let's go to pattern three. So then it'll play pattern four, which is nothing there. And then it'll, it'll play it till it's finished. And then we can go to... That's why I'm slow because I haven't put anything into it. Then I'll play pattern five, which I think there is something in. Okay, so you arrange your patterns for your parts, and then this is the speed that they will play. So maybe let's take something that. Um, that they've done because it might, you know, it probably sound better. I don't know what this is going to be like. Let's have a look. Let's go back to our slicer. Let's play it. That's two just symbols. I want something with kind of everything in it. This might be nice. So. Okay, so what they've done there, obviously, they've got their, um, we could put monophonic slide, they've got direct pattern change and engage, so we'd, we wouldn't want that normally, I wouldn't. So you can set it up as you see any way you like and then you go to part and you'll see that for they've used the eight parts there and of course you don't need to you can just shorten shorten this down to whatever you like but they've got eight parts selected and you could you could change the parts out to whatever so up to 16 parts and that is part a and then you can go to part B and arrange that, part C and arrange that, up, up until you're, you're done. Now this 16, this is the speed it plays.
two being the fastest. 16 being the most sensible. <laughs> okay, so you've arranged your parts however you like them. You arrange part in it, blah, blah, and you just do it there like this. And then in song, you choose how you want the parts to play. So you could have that play A, A, C, C, or whatever, all the way up to F, depending on how many parts you put in. When you're happy with everything, guys, I mean, the parts and patterns are pretty pretty straightforward. You know, you, you work out all your patterns here. You arrange them into parts here, how you want them to play. Like I said, you can change the length and value of, of, of everything in Egoist. And then you arrange your song sort of thing, and then the song will play. And then you can just go to save, call this something... Uh, test save for now and then hit save and then go to your user presets and then test save uh shh. yeah there you go 120 test save 120 in the and i did all sorts of cool stuff you know it's <laughs> until it's empty So I really hope, I know this has gone off, oh, wow, 50 minutes nearly. I know this has uh, been a long video, and I know that probably most people won't watch this all the way through, but another couple of things that you need to know is, like I said, the copying save is cool. It allows you to save individual parts to other parts, and then you can copy and paste like the drums to one and the bass to another, and you, you saw how we did that anyway. The randomization, this will clear it, okay, and kind of get it back to where... Uh, a thing you have an undo up here like this which you can set up how you wish or sort of redo and then you can move everything up and down by one or across by one like this and then you can go into things like eight matrix set up the lfos and stuff like that you can control absolutely everything uh via lfo i think i've covered everything yeah you get different we have done the bass, which is cool. You get a few presets for bass, but not loads and loads. We don't really need loads, kind of like a 303. Um, the the drums are a lot deeper than uh, than you initially think, and then you can set up different just by hitting randomize, and then you can set, if you know the loop that you've got is a particular scale, you can set your scale here. Your uh, Yeah, your key, basically, not your scale. You can have major scale, minor scale, or not have it switched on. So that, I think, is pretty much it. The effects we kind of covered to some degree. Um, like I said, just drawing in different things is... Going to cause all sorts of madness. You can also modulate. You see there's this modulation amount here, and you'll see it changing. And then you can send the modulation to the slicer envelope, the base envelope, the base mod... Uh, EF1 and 2, EF4, or the sequence of position. Uh, so that's quite nice. And I think I've hit everything on the slicer. Yep, uh, equal slicing. Randomize the slices. Go back to equal the pitch, the length, kind of like get a gating effect. Envelope is like decay. Or you can hold it The Max out is the volume. And then you can do individual. What is quite nice, I will do is before I go, is we've got this. <laughs> which is extremely chaotic. But what you can do is you can zoom in like this to a particular a, t a particular part. And instead of having to sort of drag all these in, if you just hit 16 equal slices now, it will just be splitting that particular part into 16 equal slices. And you can get quite granular as well. So if you expand that now, you'll see that nothing's going to be happening in this half. And it's all going to be down here. And that will sound like this. Go even further. So we're getting right into the sample. Guys, I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I, I really do hope it was um, clear-ish. Um, I think we covered pretty much uh, everything. 
that I wanted to get done. Um, yeah, it's that's it, egoist. So you you can see that like just by importing your own samples and stuff, you can oh you can randomize all this as well. Look, it's cool beans. Um, just by importing your own loops and stuff like that, you can get some absolutely brilliant. But it takes time to play with it. Just play with it, and it it can, it can be calm or or as mad as you like. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, please consider becoming a Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And I will see you guys later. Ta-ra. Egoist of the Almost Complete Guide.